Yeah. We're live. So I'm Michael. Sorry, I was at one. Uh, say again, Michael. Uh, I said I had started writing some code, but oh yeah, it's not turning out that well. So oh, what are you what are you working on? We were working on. Oh uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. So I think well, what we're working on is this. Um, you know, event live update thing. Um, I will say why I'm excited about it for my blog. And did you did you want to show me that the code that you were working on or? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so I started working on a acceptance test. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Right here. No, oh, that one. Okay. Okay, so you've got to step there and the connect app ping WSO concerning the event name Scrum. Yes. And I, in fact, I think I also started on a similar sort of. Uh, it, yeah. I mean, like, like, I'm really, I mean, I spent like two minutes on it. I mean, because uh, uh, I had to go out. Um, he said trying to quickly find live event feature. Yeah, I, I I made a step like this, uh, and I was just playing with doing this. What what do you have in your step to simulate the pinging of the app? Something like that. Uh, oh, okay. A lot of other stuff though, uh, but I'll put basically. Oh, okay. Uh, All right. You have to get around. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. No. I mean, that makes. Yeah. I was just seeing if I could. But so interesting. So, are you and are you finding that that's working? That, that you're allowed to use the put method there? Oh, we're getting we're getting a put. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's just reproducing the alleged bug. Mm hmm. Doesn't seem to be working. Okay. For a variety of reasons, potentially. Okay. Yes. But, if we put like buy bug in here, uh, can I? I was just gonna stop, stop you very briefly. I just wanted because the thing I found after I went out last night and I was searching on my phone was this thing about being able to use these test methods. Yeah. So do we already we already have that in the spec helper, right? I don't know. Oh, or the. I mean, maybe it's not even actually. We have headers and stuff. I noticed we could set. Uh, uh, like he does, we could set headers, but uh, yeah, I mean, we, not that we need to. I, I was just um, but like, I tried to do it to uh, get around. It's actually failing, but I, I tried to do it to get around this. Just be has to do with checking the uh, <clears throat> headers and stuff, yeah, right, right. Well, checking that, like, it's the cross-site scripting issue. Origin is the the origin of the Google user content dot com. Right, right. And even if you set up a a uh, so even if you set say a header that says "Hey, I'm HTTP origin." Yeah. This it, it that full Rails doesn't get fooled by that. No. Okay. And uh, so that is what this is about. Right, right. Do you, do you want to just um, r r run it? I mean, I, I guess are you hooked on by bug. You were going to show me something in the in the by. Okay, go on then. Uh, so we got through to here. Uh huh. And basically, wow. Well, I mean, basically, the problem is it's 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 not catching the error. Okay. Did do you wanna? Do, do you wanna? Did you have you got you got that on, on the branch one oh seven three? I mean, I like the various minor things. Um, do you wanna push that up so I can kind of just get a handle on the changes? So. 
Yeah, it looks like you didn't make any changes to the, I guess the cucumber, but the, yeah, it, it, it allows you to do the put and it doesn't complain about that per se. No. Okay, so I mean, I think then that article that I have is kind of like out of date. Out of, out of date, like it's like not even, it, or uh, what do we, where do we have the support for our support? We've got our cucumber environment. Do we not have, do we have capybara? Do we not have a like a cucumber support in, environment thing? There. Thanks. So <coughs> Okay, um I'll just hide my stuff and pull yours in. Okay. So if we run precisely that test, which is in the live event feature, and that's basically, it's, it's this one here, right, 52. Um, why is, I would love that to just complete the events, live event feature 52. So, I've got the buy bug in there. Let's continue. Right. And it passes. But you think it shouldn't. No. Uh -huh. Because we've got this. The time is now three. But so sh shouldn't it now, like at... The test shouldn't it be like, and I shouldn't, shouldn't it be like at this point, like at three minutes, if it hasn't been updated, then at this point we should not see the event is now live, and uh, then the ping should make it go live. I mean, you can do that. I think it's going to say that, but yeah. And where is this? Is in event instance controller. And the fact that it passes um, right, the, you, we were expecting this to fail because it shouldn't have because at the moment this shouldn't successfully update the thing because we think there's some problem. Oh really? Oh, you have to be on the path. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, da, 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 da. Hmm. Yeah. Right. So the fact that it passes is concerning because we well, we thought we we thought what we were seeing was that doing this kind of submission was not updating the um the, the 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 updated at for that element. Well, if you go into the uh, controller, right, and put a buy bug and look at the hangout params, there's a slight difference. But even fixing that difference, I don't think it actually. Hmm. Under participants. Mm hmm. But so, what if we're in here? Um, uh, that Hangout params. So hangout params. I mean, should we look first at just params? So, so it says one there, like between the two. This one here. Yeah, and then there's like a. 
Oh. Well, is the and then Hangout params removes that. Look at that. What? Sorry, I was just like so we've got params. You said there's a one there between these two things. We've got the this and then this and then Hangout params has that. But so but it, it is is part of the issue here actually that that um, oh 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 because I hard coded it on line sixty eight to uh, just. Yeah. See, that was another thing I was worried. About. I was wondering whether or not that was messing it up, but it's not. Okay. You mean this line sixty-eight? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I mean the thing that I'm thinking, looking at this, is that this isn't fully uh, replicating the situation of what we think is the bug, because what we notice is is that. The event starts, you know, and the event start is is as the result of a um, a thing coming back from the like there's a, the hangout connection. The first up update seems to work, and the second one doesn't. All oh. right. So what we've got here is we've got like again we're kind of reaching in and sort of manipulating the database, and then we're doing this update. Oh. Um, I mean, I guess the like superficially without doing anything more complex is if, if I, we, I would change the time to uh yeah um right so let's move it to so do 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 seven oh six yeah so we should ex let and let's have this I mean it's it's ridiculous to uh Thing, but we can clean this up once we've proven or disproven this hypothesis. So we've got basically 703. Uh, that's later. It would now not be live. It is that's all working so far. If the same thing comes around again, um, Right. Wow. So on the second ping? On the second ping, it doesn't update. That's interesting. Why is that? Well, I think, I, I think you said something yesterday that made me think that, that was the case, is that you said, you know, on the update, if the, in, if the incoming data for the update of the event instance is the same, Right, kind of Rails knows it, and it's like actually, oh, no changes are needed, so it doesn't change the updated at if the data is coming in is the same. So if you think about it, like in this context here, we've created the event instance and it's in a certain state. Uh -huh. That when you ping it in this kind of situation, you've got a certain data package that is, for whatever reason, slightly different from this. Um, I, I assume. I mean, we could we could try and check I don't think that. it is. Uh, uh well yeah I, I might I might be wrong that's just my theory um if look at the connect yeah if we if we look at the this thing but so for example I'm okay all I'm doing is is shepherding things out of the event instance into the right I mean you're 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 trying to replicate it exactly but I I, I would I would guess that there's maybe something different. There's something in this, uh, thing. Or, or, or there's some more complex underlying Rails bug that, um, you know. If you go to uh, the controller and change out that hard coding now. So which hard coding? What, this one? Yes. So this is something that you... Interested in that. Don't erase the whole thing. No, 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 no I'm, not, I'm not going to. I, I, I guess... I hard coded that. Okay, well, what was it before? Params, it was... Taking it out of the params. Oh, okay. And and what? Why did I'm just interested? No criticism. I'm just interested. What? what uh, why was that something that you thought needed changing? Because it was slightly different. I think when it went through the put method. Okay. It was okay. like different structure when it went through the put method than. Mm. If you put it back to the params. Okay. So like this. 
I think it's perhaps participants or something. I don't know. But I guess the thing to do here is just to um, get compare with branch develop. Why do I have develop master? Right, it's param participants. And and you add, and we oh this is something we we added like I think I added that to um okay and and you were you were suggesting now a slight change to this yes what was what was the change that you were thinking of put it back to what it was okay sure yeah I mean I, yeah I was. It was And I guess also, if this is a difference from what's actually on the server system, we should just remove that and see what set of errors. Uh, why are you removing that? Because that's not live in production at the moment, and we're trying to replicate a production bug. I, oh, I, added, that, I added that yesterday just so that I could check whether update was there or not. But okay, so this is failing in the same way. So this appears to be, superficially, we might say this looks like it's, the bug, or one the, of the bugs. Yeah, I mean that it that, that we we don't know that for certain. I mean, I I guess the what's the best? What what I'm tempted to do is to try and add something that, um, <laughs> like as I think you were suggesting, like if if we add to the hangout params, so this, I and mean, if we stick in here, like updated that time, <clears throat> you know, updated that time now. Yeah. And we might, and, and just see superficially if that fixes this issue. That's what I was, yeah. Yeah. And we could even get a pull request in with that, because, I mean, the real question is, does that fix it in the production yeah. system? Um, and then it would be, so that, that, that does make that, that, I mean, what we don't know, of course, is if that particular error was, the error was the we, error or one of the number of errors that we, we suspect are in play there. But if this, um, all right, it, it certainly seems like it's worth getting a pull request in there with that to see if it has the effect that we, we I don't know why I didn't see that last night. It's, um, sometimes just takes a, <laughs> a you know, well, you, you've done great. You, you know, there's been various points this week where you've seen things that I, I, I didn't. I think, and, and that's why I think the pair programming is, even if we irritate each other occasionally, you know, it, it's sort of worth it. There, there's always, uh, it, it's, it's, you know, it's rare. It's rarer for I think, you know, a pair to get to get stuck in the same way. But so let me push that to you, and and you could run it on yours and. Uh, and I'll run the C there. Uh, the reason my gem pile dot lock keeps changing. Really? That's strange. I was noticing I'm not getting any changes to my um, the YAML files, or whatever. You might I noticed you, you were seeing some of those. Um, you might want to delete those ones and see if they, I think you may have them left, hmm, well. I might as well get the pull request in as well. Please open it. You might want to add the cassettes for the, are you getting cassettes? Oh, uh, for live users or live events? I haven't. I'm not getting any new cassettes on here. Uh, they may appear once I've. I actually just the stuff I just first. I didn't even like minus m uh, extends live uh, event feature to wrap bug and uh, fix it. 
wrap um, because that's bug and fixes. Um, push origin 1073. I would have thought that there would be some new YAMLs. Maybe you checked them in already. Uh, and then. No, they're not. I didn't check them out. Okay. Yeah, they haven't generated on mine yet <coughs> as well. Let's. So this is. Uh, fixes a uh, problem where our connection incoming API fails to uh, update updated at timestamp um, insert fixes one oh seven three Ah. Okay. Error using text. So I have to do that again now. Has it not created a pull request? It has not created a pull request. And you remember, oh, of course. Um, fixes a problem with incoming API for Hangout connection uh, where similar submissions. There is also that uh, thing I did in there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the class of Al and everything. The class of Al. Yeah. Right. Uh, right. That, that's all part of the testing, right? Yes. Yes. Uh, would not update data that. Uh, I was thinking that could be potentially an error point in production if for some reason. Yeah, I mean, I, I think what I would like to like to do, and we can have a step back for for a minute. I mean, let's also have a look at. Yeah, I've got some selecting videos from the list. See project related videos. That's that looks to me like well, we'll see. I mean, the the thing that I that that I would like to do. We, wouldn't, we don't have to immediately, but what I would like to do is to refactor these tests so that they kind of become like much more rigorous acceptance tests uh which would involve i think also reviewing what what you've done under the hoods there as, as so that but so i would imagine like in the first like in the first instance here like what it should say is sort of uh given that um like, like the hangout connection uh from you know, for an event as, you know, pinged uh, WSO uh, to start event. And I, I don't know, we'll work out exactly what the text is. That's the right, the main language thing. And, and then we've got, what is it? Because the, 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 what, what I think we want to replicate is the series of API calls. So there's, oh. there's one that it, like, that it starts it up is through that. That's just, this is this is I guess associated with the the user having pressed start hangout is I, I, event is live um, for a given thing. I don't know how much it, like because the button click there effectively goes off to a different site. So there's no point in simulating that button click. We just need to simulate an accurate incoming uh, thing. And then so I, I guess one is uh, then the you know. Uh, event should be live, and then what do we have um, after? Is it, is it that after after three minutes? We've got uh, the event not be live. I mean, this language is all completely wrong, but uh, yeah. I've got given an a further update from the event uh, from the 
Hangout connection. The event should be live. And I don't know, is that? I mean, we don't, we, maybe this, the three minutes thing is muddying the water. Uh, it's not making it wonderfully readable. There's, and then, yeah, I mean, th 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 that's effectively, I mean, th that's sort of extraneous. But, uh, but anyway, but so that we've got these, these, yeah, so these two pings through the API and that we actually have the initial API set up. Because it, it, it seems to me that the, the, the fundamental problem with the, the initial test is that it basically circumvents part yeah. of the, you know, incoming, what have you. So yeah, I mean, I, I would love to redo it there um, and, and review all of the components of it. Uh, what have we got here? What, now, what's failed here? Now, that's just actually just two of our usual candidates. So otherwise, that's gone green. Uh, so we've got a pull request in the water, so to speak. So that should now be associated with that. That's the pull request. Um, fix this problem with the event section. Files change. So that is now thinking about it. OK. So, so clearly, it would be good, I think. There's a lot of other stuff in there. Oh, yeah. Well, I guess, you know, uh, yeah, uh, and lots of great, exciting, um, you know, test coverage for this uh, issue. But yeah, I mean, the, I'm popping that in, you know, we've, we've still got, this has still got, like, all of the commits, right? And... I mean, feel free to edit that and add more, more description. Uh, the thing I was just putting in the pull request there is just the title of the pull request. So, yeah. <clears throat> but so we could we could dive into doing this. I, I I'm, I'm quite interested in doing this, and I get you're quite interested in doing this as well. Like, in what? Oh, the refactoring. Uh, kind of refactoring this, and and like I think the thing you were saying, looking under the hood at. Um, oh, I want the. Yeah. Can we just have that over there? Yeah, like you, you were expressing some concerns about some of these things. Uh -huh. Um. So we could, we could, we could have a review of those. Okay. Um. I guess the other thing, though, is is that we've got that concern that. This was this was one problem. We were also worried that the JavaScript was dying in the correct in that app. And I guess it would probably make sense to get this fixed and out before trying to investigate that, right? Yeah. Because otherwise it's gonna be difficult to tell what's what's doing what. Um then Please you see that this is actually showing a session. Yeah. So I think that that's actually. Oh, are we actually getting on a handle on the the issues related to the events? We're kind of coming out of the woods, maybe. <laughs> Famous last words. Some of the links posted by Git and Hangouts are not. Well, format is okay. Yeah, that's sort of another pet peeve of mine. When edit event, there's a uh, okay. There's a state issue there. That one there. I've got some ideas for adjusting that. Only one date on. Okay, right. Still have the date on the index. Table. Yeah, right. Uh. <coughs>
Okay. Okay. Okay, so this one is now, right, so this one is being closed by, because we fixed 116. Uh -huh. 116. So that one, that should be in here. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I just, I just want to have a quick look around to see if there was some other... I mean, th there, there are still other things to fix. But they don't feel like um, a kind of a, a, a strong bleed. The, like... And I, and I feel like getting this out and then investigating the JavaScript issue, like this, the, the nature of the, the event showing that it's live is kind of critical to people's attempts to get into, you know, accidentally starting separate things. Um, what I'm also noticing is that we've got, um, you know, despite not having thousands of people desperately trying to sign up for Premium Premium Plus, um, if we look at the course and the Gitter channel, um, there's actually, you know, just looking at it last night, uh, there's like, you know, lots of people just sort of chat, like, you know, I'm seeing lots of pairing sessions created and people saying, oh, can you join me? Anybody else doing this? Yeah, oh, yeah, let's do that. Oh, cool. You know, let's hang out. Oh, let's pair. Let's sort of, you know, and I'm kind of like, oh, you know, actually, like, you know, I mean, our, our whole objective here was to try and, make it so that you know larger numbers of the of the students would be able to pair in in the in the course and superficially it seems like it's 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 happening um okay. and what i'd really like to do is start getting some stats on it uh -huh. but and and you know i think I, I think the thing that you're also interested in which is like to start analyzing the pairing patterns you know and moving towards you know, can we be suggesting pair partners to each, each other or really kind of getting down and and making that whole pairing process as smooth as possible? So I had to mention it. Anyway. Um, okay. That was June 20th. Yeah, yeah, he's talking to me sometimes. Right, anyway, okay. Well, I guess we should... Do, do you want to... Um, did you want to pong there and and drive on some aspects of, of refactoring this or I guess should I should I try and get this text that I've started into a uh okay um let's close this because it'll keep pinging me ow <laughs> I think depending on my volume setting that can be really I'm going to turn that down. Uh, <clears throat> okay. So I guess in in the pattern that we had before, like let's leave the this thing here. So let let let's put in a, a scenario name here. So this is like given that someone has started an event, but this is a so really the scenario here is that that um, ongoing ping from Hangout Connection app keeps event alive. Yeah. Yeah. So so given the hang connection for an event has pinged do we mean to start uh, to indicate event start. Uh 
and I guess it could be for, for events from then the event should be live uh, and I guess I mean it would make more more sense So we could say that, and after three minutes, when the Hangout connection things to indicate ongoing event uh, and the event should be live I think we don't need those uh, then the event should be live and after three minutes given uh, Uh, so what do you think of this text then? Uh, the works do we need to say? <sighs> I noticed that we're saying for the event scrum in, in 57 and 50 and 60. Yeah, yeah. But we're not saying it on 55. Yeah, I mean, I wonder, like, uh, should we be um, given an event scrum? And we can set an instance variable there. Yeah. So given an event scrum, and the Hangout connections ping to indicate uh, event, uh, the event starts, then the event should be live. And after three minutes, when the Hangout connection pings to indicate uh, the event is ongoing, then the event should be live. And after three, I'm going to say more minutes, <laughs> uh, more an option after, and after three more minutes, uh, given the you know, uh, when the yeah, hangout connection to more minutes just for readability, yeah, just for readability. Uh, I've even put in there like this. Oh, and I guess like checking that the it, like this is. I guess we would want to have a separate scenario, like like rather than cramming into this the functionality that it also goes, you know, that it's not live, should not be live. That can be a separate thing, right? Yeah. Uh, so if we have um, if we have this, uh, so we can do that. Create all step definition in. And this is events. events. If you go down, there's the event steps. There we go. Yeah. Okay. So event steps. So we've got now. So this step and the hangout for event, that's actually in a, I mean, you know, that's insane. It's just hangout steps. It's doing all different sorts of things. But so the event scrum, they haven't there. Basically, there we've got an event. So that's event name. So we can then just, we can have an event set 
defined by event name. So that's the first one. And the Hangout connection is pinged to indicate the event start. So, so we've got an event, and we've got an event where there, there, in principle, there isn't an instance, is there? Um, and we've just got this incoming request. Now, is the is the initial request uh, a put just like this? I guess not. It's maybe it's different. Right. Um, uh, I think it might actually be the same. Let me see. Uh, I think it's I, the same. Hmm. See line six in the update method. Um. And I want here well, event instance event. I do not need to look at what well, I'm. I'm interested in looking at event instance event. Uh, here. Okay. Yeah, because it'll basically do find or create by. Yeah, I don't know how it generates that uh, ID. It's some kind of unique ID. Right. And presume well, then presumably that's. Um, That's something that's coming in from the um, Google Hangout, and but we can make it what I think whatever we want potentially. Yeah. Uh, so in principle, we can be doing the same thing as this, but we've got it hitting. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. So if we just I mean we could we could define I don't know if it's the right thing, but if we if we define a Google ID here and just say that that's like what have you. And so we would do this incoming. So the title there is going to be the event title. Uh -huh. And the host ID is going to be the user ID associated with the event. Right. And then we've got the event ID. So in the participants is then some kind of string with some participants in it. Yeah, potentially. Chunk like that. So, we've got like participants. Well, I would have them be an actual, you know, structure, not just a string. But I, I thought that the, we it was just storing the string in the database at the moment. And it, it, this I is don't know. I mean, I, I would, you can just make it a structure though in Java in, in Ruby. Right, but if I make it a structure here, then this is going to like put a structure and it's going to pass it into the put thing. So it does that? Yeah. Well, it we could try try both ways. Uh, so the Hangout URL. No, anyway. Yeah. So the Hangout URL is just some whatever. And then it is live. Project ID. Can that, that could just be a random project ID? Category, Scrum. YT video ID. Like so, uh -huh. I guess these these need, need to be strings in order to re reflect. Anyway, so and now presumably we need various things like this, but I guess maybe I'll just get the it kind of sketched out. Then the event should be live. So that's kind of these two, when I'm on the show page for Scrum, 
Okay. I'm supposed to do it like that on line 79 anymore. We're not supposed to do something like on, on this one? By underscore name. I don't think you're supposed to. Oh, no. And in fact, we've got the... We've got a reference to the event anyway. Why is that? Oh, that's in. So... So we can do visit event path event. Because we know what the event is. And then we should say a expect uh, page to have content. Uh, this event is now live. Like so. Yeah. Yeah. And after three minutes, so I guess can can we use DeLorean there? I mean the after three and then put more in in, in parentheses. Oh yeah, because it really doesn't matter. Yeah. So you're gonna have to pass in a a a dummy, an actual thing, and no block. Well, let's try it. See whatever. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we've been using this, and the time is now, what have you, and we were saying is that we should probably use DeLorean instead. Um, so, oops. Okay, what? So here, DeLorean. Was it, was it pars? What was the method on the DeLorean to... Ah. DeLorean... It's too low. Oh, go on. Ruby. Time travel to three minutes from now or whatever. Right. Time travel to. And then quote. Okay, yeah, in quotes. Right. Or three minutes, like with the regular Ruby syntax or the Rails syntax. Three dot minutes dot from. Three three dot minutes from. I I'm just making it up. I don't know whether that's true. Yeah. Interesting. Well, the examples are like three. Yeah. They're all from in the past. Yeah. Future. I guess the thing to do is just quick look at the tests. Delorean spec. Past date, past date, from now. Two minutes from now. Three minutes from now. Okay. When the hangout connection pings to indicate the event is ongoing, which basically is this one. I guess I'll just take a copy of that for the moment. Uh, and then the event should, and we can put it in here, still be live. Okay. So, and I guess we might anticipate this failing with some of these things. Uh, uh -huh. This, I guess, then doesn't need event there. Um, let's just see how that. And we're now on 53. I mean, it's a random thought. It's, it's an interesting thing about, you know, checking for, like, like this sort of cucumber tip exposes what you might expect to see in the interface, but it distracts from that description at the really abstract high level because that may well change. Uh, then after three, okay. So for some reason, 
then the event should be live. I've, I've got a question mark like that. That's right. Okay, undefined method title for event. Do events not have titles? They have names? Oh, it would be it would be nice to be cleaning the whole undefined method user ID for event. Ah, is it user dot ID? And the scrum itself, does it have a associated user? Possibly not. Uh, I mean, I guess undefined method. Hmm. I guess we can just give it like a, a three or something for the moment. At the moment, it doesn't it doesn't seem important that the user exists or anything. Okay, your block takes zero arguments, but the regex matched. Then the event should be live. Oh, uh, so right. If I have that, I have to have a. Oh god, that's annoying. Or the other one too. Okay. Okay. So and that's probably failed for the. Yep. Okay. I. I'm thinking that I might. I, I guess the thing is there. I don't know if I necessarily want to push it, push it onto the same branch. Um, I'm just thinking to Pong there because I need to step away for a second. Um, I guess I'm just thinking if we go here and we look at this issue, is that now still so thinking about it? What's going on there? What? Cued. What? It's like, I guess it's like still, look at that, what's happening there? For some reason, it's stop build, okay. Build three. Okay, and now that one's building, all right. But I, I guess there's, I feel like potentially we're working on, a, this is a, so, the factor live event feature make more declarative and investigates um, API hits and stubbing. Uh, and so that's 1144. So I'm just going to get checkout minus. B one one four four uh, refactor event live feature uh, get command minus am uh, gets high level uh, feature language uh, declaratized. Uh, git push origin one one four four. Okay, didn't you? Yeah, should we pong there and you pull out that oh. branch? Yeah, I'll be back momentarily. Cool.
So, uh, looks like we're not on the right page. No. Yeah. Ah. Uh, uh, and then steps two seventy eight. Which one are we on? Fifty six. The event should be live. Fifty six. Yeah. Oh, well, it... Come on, B. So I'm going to visit event path event. Oh. I mean, I think that this is this is probably failing because it's not starting the event in the right way. I haven't got any. I mean, you, you could sort of throw throw in your event instance controller pre-flight check stuff just to see if that makes it. All right, we've got a. Okay, this is an R spec. R spec? Yeah, we've just had on the um, previous branch, there's an R spec failure, which I'll just deal with in the background. Undefined method each for string. Really? Tweet YouTube link. Yeah, we're failing on that. Did, and you, I guess, didn't get that failure before when you were looking. Oh. Uh, but it's on the first ping. Right. Did, did, it, did it fail on the subsequent pings in your previous experience, or this is the first time you've seen this? This is the first time I've seen this failure. Right. But we weren't actually initializing it before. No, no, sure. Tweet a YouTube link. Do we actually have a YouTube link? Uh, I think there was a YouTube link specified. Uh, so what is it saying? It's saying event instance broadcaster. If you go into tweets, did you find the place where it's trying to do the each? Uh, hold on one second, please. Sure thing. It's failing on your string with participants. Oh, okay. It can't be a string. It has to be. Okay. Like I said, it should be a a uh, action right. of some kind. Sure, they'll change it. I'm I'm just I'm quite surprised by that because, you know, it's doing a put operation, right? So it's going over. Um, I guess it's maybe it's like, in order to have it correctly JSON formatted, it has to start out as a. Well. Uh, I don't know what you mean, but inside of here, 
Right, right. Oh, no, I totally see that. Really assuming that it's right, right. some kind of structure. Sure. So it's now got a new failure of undefined method split. Twitter service. Wow. Okay, so what does this do? One seventeen. Undefined method split for action controller parameters. I don't know what that means. Mm. Well, what, what's on? Go, why don't you go to the Twitter service and let's look at line seventeen. Ah, uh, that's not even. It says, isn't it saying Twitter service to RV line seventeen? Seventeen. It's trying to split the broadcaster. There's hangout dot broadcaster. Right. Have we have we even set a broadcaster? I guess we haven't. I wonder if so <sighs> All right. So, you okay? What? I said, are you, you okay? You you just thinking? Yeah. Do you want to just add a broadcaster, like as a, a string, with some names in it, in the? Like on line two seven eight. Uh huh. I mean, it would be nice if we had a example. You know, submission. We can grab one from the Scrum later on or something. Yeah, that's clearly not being set because that isn't even a parameter, dude. So you think it won't get through the no. hangout params? Yeah. So at this point, I want to know... Uh, is broadcaster uh, gone? Where is that other step that we had? Uh, Here it is. It gets set up here. Nope. Uh, in a factory girl, is there a default broadcaster? I don't know. I was wondering if it's broadcaster a, a, a method on the, is it event instance? Yeah, it's okay. Broadcaster is a me method on uh, event instance that loops through Okay, so I think the participants has to be in a certain format. Because yeah. supposedly we had the problem that participants wasn't that structure. And then now it's got like that, that eaching it's doing. Yep. So we... 
I get, it's like it's iterating through the structure of the participants and it's looking for somebody where the is broadcaster is set to true. Go on. What we're going to do is we're going to run this other scenario that we're trying to replace mm -hmm. and just actually get. The parameters. Like this. Right. Sorry, wrong one. Uh, here we go. Fifty three. Mm. Really? Huh. So we're choking in here. Mm -hmm. Oh, I think it's that extra one in there. Yeah, I think does it need to be the just the um and it shouldn't be an array, it should be a can you go on. What are you thinking it needs to be? Oh, I think you're right. The the one shouldn't be there and I think that maybe it shouldn't be an array. It should be the like we should remove the enclosing square brackets. Uh, in the event uh, steps. Hold on one second. Sure. I know this is slow for you, but... No, no, no. Take... It is. I, I'm, I'm in the background trying to fix this other issue with the R spec.
more stuff. Go continue. Oh. If that works. Mm. Oh. Show me what you've got participants set as now. Uh, in the event steps. Oh. This. Right. This is what it was actually. I don't know. Maybe we need to look at production data. Right. Because this is what it's actually set as. When it's coming through in the other test, you're seeing it as a. The yeah, event, you, you did event instance dot precedence. The way that this is being set up. Right, it's got like a double nested array. I, I get, yeah, the. So, what is it actually failing on? Do we see? Event instance 44. I guess it's like failing as it goes around that. Oh, wow. e it's, getting, it's getting this. It's getting one again. So it must be failing on that. Yeah, the funny, uh, what I'm doing at the moment is just looking at self participants each, and then it's got that, you know, underscore hash. That sort of seems like it's expecting. Yeah, I understand what it's expecting. But... No, I, well, I'm not suggesting that you don't. I'm just like going through, I'm making that explicit in my mind. I'm not trying to explain it to you. Um, and I'm thinking like, Okay, so it's expecting a, ha a but what it seems there is like when I, I see that, that it's expecting a nested hash, right? A hash inside a hash. Yes. Rather than yeah, those those things there. Like this part, it's expecting this. To be set equal to the hash thing, and then it will we should be able to extract person and the display name from it. And that, where, where does that participant come like in the previous version it's it seems like this should not be inside the hash is what you're saying this is broadcaster should be outside the hash yeah it, it looks like it should be a it, yeah it looks like the ones shouldn't be there it, it looks like it should have a totally different structure yeah um and I guess it was in Hangout step. I mean, maybe the, the yeah, as I say, you were saying before, production data is the, is the key. Like the the Hangout steps that it has, I'm just looking for that on my own system. Do you want what, to, let me actually just hit. Yeah, grab, go grab some production data. But, uh... Uh... It's called remote, right? Uh, yeah, that's it. Because it's the factory go for. Factory go. Where does factory go live? Features. No. Factories, event instances. Yeah, factory. Did did you look at the? Well, anyway, not, yeah, keep go go find the thing. Yeah, definitely. Uh, what what are we in? Do you know? You don't know. Uh, well, if you find by, is it going to be name or title? I never remember. Uh, I guess it was name. Uh, and we're in like pair programming on website one. Yeah, 
it's not it's title. Error. Pair programming on website one. Uh, yeah, it might have a capital S, but anyway, just. No. Did you try capitalizing the S in website? No. Hmm. That's according to general. We are pair, pro oh, pair programming is one word, camel case. With the. Yep. But oh, still. No. Mm. Ah, and then the S is not capitalized. <sighs> The yeah. I guess it's good. it's only returning a single event instance, so you could just do like yeah. So that looks like the structure that we need, and, and it looks to me like the event the event instance factory actually creates the structure in the wrong way, in a way that can't actually be parsed. Correct. So do we actually want to use real data? Sure. For the let's, I think let's use it for the moment to see if it actually gets us past this issue, and then we can reflect. Oh, it doesn't matter. Over there. So now. Oh. Define local there. So it got us past that. Okay. Uh, event steps. What are event steps? Events the file that you're in there now. Okay. So I think somewhere there's we've got a reference to the event variable when it should be an instance variable. Two ninety eight. Uh yeah. End of the line. Yeah. Like that, right? Right. So it's it's failing now. <laughs> it should be passing, right? Uh, well, which which point in it precisely is it failing? Is it getting? Is it going? Just just going to first start event. So we've started it. It's live. Three minutes passes. We ping. Then it fails to and it's on. not it's not being live at that point. Yeah. So I wonder So what have we done in three minutes? The event is hanging up pings. The, the I'm confused there actually like the change that you made on line two nine eight in the event steps. Uh huh. 
Okay. What about it? Uh, it, it, it looks to me like you change the event ID there to be the event instance ID when I think it should be the at event dot ID. Oh. That's right. Oh, they pass now. Good call. Oh, okay. Okay. I'll go in and change. And then we'll break it. Uh, of that instance. Well, the key thing is to go back and break it, right? Uh, yes. By getting rid of that. Uh -huh. to see it fail in the right place. Right. Just to make sure that the refactor test is actually actually doing something sensible, testing in the same way as the original. Exactly. And we're failing on line fifty nine. Shows. Yeah. I mean that's that's failing earlier. That is failing earlier. But that's probably because. The there are, we're, there's, we're using more consistent data through the two two of them, whereas this on the like line sixty seven, sixty eight, whatever the sixty six was creating something that maybe was sufficiently different from the from the other one. Well, what do you mean the other one? Uh, well, I mean that there is like in the other scenario, there on line sixty six. And seventy four and eighty, we attempt to update the event instance in a certain way. So my my theory about this whole thing was is that the the creation of the event instance uh, on line sixty six created it with a certain structure, and then you previously had to without the fix it was passing on line seventy four and the oh. whole yeah right so it all rests on the fact that if you are adding some different stuff, then the up updated that thing, you know, uh, I'm not yeah. gonna put up now. No, well, it, it's still only a theory. Um, I mean, I'd say pop, pop that updated that back in uh, for that test. I mean, I think we've got more to explore, uh, particularly as regards the I mean, I've got a separate issue that we might, but sort of we we might, um, yeah. Anyway, that, that's a that's a good point. If you want to pass that over to me, I guess you yeah want to add the. That live events cassette as well. Yeah, and you're getting a gem file dot lock modification. That's weird. Yeah. Cool. Now. So I'm getting with the issue now going back to the previous thing. So with the fix, the problem is that that fix now causes one of our controller specs to fail because there's a controller spec which doesn't expect the updated at to be triggered. Uh -huh. And I've just been trying to like adjust that. And I've got like DeLorean time travel in there. And I'm trying to get like, oh, I've been kind of like knocking this around in the background. Uh, it's now failing for me here on the comparison is like one of the things is actually the string and one of them is actually the date. Uh -huh. Which is really annoying. Um, if I put just the string in, I guess that, that should be, if I put just the string in there, 
Oh, that's the controller spec. Yeah. I don't know, like whether I pause it or I mean, I've got the. I guess the problem is the De 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 DeLorean time travel to this point doesn't stop the clock running necessarily, or does it? Yeah, I mean, actually, the times are different, actually, as well, aren't they? Yes, by a certain number of seconds. So I think the time travel there. At option actually doesn't so I what I was previously doing here was I was saying like um DeLorean doesn't stop time. No. I wonder if Time Cop does. Anyway. I don't think any of them do. Um the thing was is I was then to receive now and return date dot pars. Is I doing But that that should that should work, but at least in, in, in the time cop in the movie, you know, they could see the future, couldn't they? No, they couldn't actually stop it. But so <coughs> here, yeah. Th then I get this like undefined method UTC. Does it have to be date time? Is that the only thing? <laughs> okay, all right. Even if Okay, so that, so that's 107.3. What's the branch that you just pushed back up to? Uh, that's 1144? A 1144 Okay. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And so now get rid of the controller spec. Event instances, live event feature. So yeah, fifty-three. Okay. So we've got uh, so that that's all working. I mean, we could just delete that. The, the, the question that, that's outstanding then is these things. What was and what was your concern about? This is not an accurate simulation. Uh, yeah, kind of. But... Hmm. Uh, and so we've got now. Well, that's interesting that that's got. I guess that's. I guess that. When you did that search, it found like the first one that it had a reference to. Maybe. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, but so basically, that at the moment will cause that to fail. Let's just have a look at this. So the event instances controller, and that's because we've got a cause preflight check. That set cause headers. 
allowed and local requests. And so you were already experimenting with setting the setting these things. Uh -huh. yeah. Right, we just don't just does it just fails. It doesn't even get into the control. Right. Yeah, but it doesn't get into the update method. Yeah. And I remember looking, so, we, so we're in here, and so we're going for allowed, so it's looking at what the HTTP origin is, in this context is nil. Um, and then also local request. Just trying to match a nil against, you know, whatever. Yeah, request env. Oof. We've got a huge request environment. And we're expecting it there to, so HTTP origin. Okay, and so this, this is what you were trying before. And right, so in the, not the. So if we have that set. So now requests still nil. So Oh, so I wonder if it needs to be an underscore there. So still nil. But that seems to imply that that header operation has not necessarily affected the put operation at all. We've got, what have we ended up with? So with the request env. Oh, it's like added HTTP hyphen on the front of it. Ah. So I want Make it yeah, work. Maybe. Um, I don't know why it would do that. Okay. So does that now make it allowed? And is it a local request? No. Is it or? So that doesn't, I guess we can continue. And the screen. Okay. So. Good call. In principle, yeah, then that could just replace all that, couldn't it? So, and then you probably need any other stuff to, oh, you do, okay. Uh, I just, what do I do? Do I take the buy bug out? No, let's get the buy bug out. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. And then this one, right, we're just reloading the same participant. So it's got slightly more realistic data in that case there. It would be nice to make the whole set more realistic, but let's put it. Well, that's a, I guess that's a good point to, I, I guess, oh, I, I don't do that. Um, I guess what we should have, and we could go ahead and delete this, 
there's there's kind of the associated scenario, which is that um, you know lack of ping from Hangout connection after two minutes uh, leads with kills event. I guess it's the so that would then say given an event scrum and it's okay the event should be live and after three minutes the event should be dead should and the event should be dead that that looks right doesn't it kind of yeah yeah so i'm using right in the very <laughs> what is right uh oh Event steps. The ethical sense. I think I think more in the um aesthetic, aesthetic sense. Aesthetic sense? Yeah, definitely in this sense. Not the metaphysical sense. Well I'll think about that. Uh to not to have content. Okay. Accordance with truth, big big letter T truth. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, th I think I've decided. Yeah, I've I've had a problem with thinking that I understood things, you know, the truism of things or the true true nature of things. But I think um, I've had false confidence in that. Uh, so, and I guess so. This is like. You know that it does go off and then it is dead. That's a function of this two minutes thing, isn't it? So if we were going to look at seeing that thing fail, that's actually part of the event. Uh, so if we just said this was true, and we we stayed live forever, then we might expect expect to see that one fail. Yes. Okay. But that is somewhat pleasing. Let's have a look at that. Uh... Okay. Yes. Good. And I mean, in principle, then that this is now redundant, right? We don't. This is not providing any additional cover, as far as I can tell, and is sort of an integration test because it's not doing the full loop. So we should probably just delete that, right? Yeah. I was complaining that I haven't got the couple I see there. Okay. Uh. And I guess actually that these these things show event is not live when the event hangout has died. I think we we sort of created that. I mean these things here show event is live when hangout event is still active. So I think um, show event is live when event is started a minute previously. I guess we've got. Right, and so the equivalent of that one, the equivalent of this one, is like that. This is the cleaner form of that one, right? Uh -huh. So, and I guess if that 
I should have run that single one. If that passes, like the corresponding failure for this, uh, would be would be derived from like if we made this thirty seconds ago. They're all green. If we call that thirty seconds ago, then now that's on line thirteen should fail. And then I think we can actually remove all of those. Yeah, so that fails in the right way. That back, move these. Um, those notes in my blog. Again? Sorry, I said I'm reading news about court decision. Oh, yeah. About the Deferred Action for Parents of Americans program. Uh huh. <clears throat> What's that about? If they decide, well, the big thing in the UK is about people taking their being allowed to take their school or being taken to court for taking their children out of school for holidays in term time. Oh, it's, uh, uh, so Democrats want, like, uh, you're aware that in the U.S. there's a huge number of uh, immigrants that don't have paperwork or whatever. They're all I am aware of that, yes. Illegal immigrants, and uh, uh -huh. they haven't followed the proper... Mm -hmm. procedures and they're often from s countries like in South America and Mexico usually. Sure. And uh, uh, they do lower end work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like clean yards and stuff. Sure. And uh, cooking kitchens and stuff like that. And, Indeed. Uh, uh, so anyway, they're, it's a big political issue and, and uh, Obama, I think like a year ago, said that Congress hadn't done anything about it, mm -hmm. by which he meant that he didn't pass um, what a plan for these people that are here illegally to become here legally, mm -hmm. some kind of like plan. So Republicans call it amnesty. Right, right. Because the idea is that you broke the law and now we're going to forgive you right rather than just deport you so yes. uh uh obama was pushing for some kind of plan to normalize a large percentage of these people mm. and uh he he didn't do that they didn't get that through congress obviously all right so uh he announced like last year I think he actually announced during the last elections almost two years ago mm -hmm. that uh, he was going to have deferred action. Okay. So in other words, if people came forward and said, oh, I'm here illegally, but I have a job and stuff. Right. Show that they're not like committing other, uh, otherwise committing crimes. Sure. Then they're the... Bureau of Immigration and stuff is going to like not is going to defer action on them. Meaning okay. Not they they they're not going to they're not going to deport them immediately. Yeah. And, um, right. So there was a special part of this for illegal immigrants who are the parents of a U.S. citizen or a lawful or permanent resident, which is kind of weird. Mm -hmm. they're legal, but their parents are legal. Mm -hmm. At least one of their parents are legal. Right. Like, I guess. And uh, Texas sued over this. Cause oh, really? That was, that was like a violation of law to just. It's a big thing. Like, the exact. Like, so in the United States, the executive can um, say, oh, I'm not going to. Like, it's. Because there's so many laws, right? Mm -hmm. like, 
if they were just to enforce all the laws all the time, like we'd go bankrupt. Mm -hmm. Basically, because like it would just cost so much money. Because it's easier to write a law mm -hmm. than to actually come up with funding to enforce that law. Yes. Like it's much easier to write a law that theoretically will be enforced. Indeed, indeed. And to actually full on enforce it all the time. So what it does is it gives the president a lot of power. It gives people in the executive a lot of power to say, oh, in this case, we're not going to enforce the law. Mm -hmm, we're not mm -hmm. going to enforce it that vigorously. Right. But the issue is whether they can do that prospectively like this or not. Right. Like, can they say, like, can they just say prospectively, like, oh, can they set up like a program that basically waives large portions of the law or do they have to say, oh, in this particular case, mm. because you were a very nice person. Right. Like, does it have to be case by case? Mm -hmm. like, oh, mm -hmm. We're not going to bother to enforce the law here. Mm -hmm. So this is like one of the big issues. Yes. This is being litigated. Yes, I, I mean, it's one close to my heart because my, my children are all American citizens, but it doesn't give me the right to live in the U.S. So uh, what happens is basically they set this up. Mm -hmm. And then there was like a bunch of things. Like, of course, the government said, oh, Texas doesn't have standing. Okay. To challenge this in court, right? Uh-huh. Because in the United States system, you have to have standing to, to bring a lawsuit, which means that you're you're wronged in some way. Uh -huh. And they were like, oh, Texas isn't really wronged. So they don't really mm -hmm. have standing, blah, blah, blah. So that's what this case was about. Right. Whether the case can even go forward, that's what this case was about. Okay. So uh, what was the ruling then, that it can go forward? Uh, it can go forward because of a divided court. So the lower court was oh, okay. that uh, it can go forward and the injunction stands against Obama. Right. Uh, so that's where it's at. Okay. But it has no precedential value because it was a divided court because that other guy died. So oh. mm. you remember... I don't know whether you remember him dying because you probably were in a news drought at that point. Well, I, I haven't followed any news for a year. A big conservative United States Supreme Court justice died around at home times, Doug. Oh, okay. And they've been... Basically, the Republicans are like, oh, we're not going to fill that seat until a new, a new president comes in because he might be a Republican. Right. <laughs> Goodness. So basically what's going on is that a lot of the big cases are all divided right now uh -huh. because there's not, there's only eight votes instead of nine. Right. Interesting. But a divided court means that the uh, lower court's opinion stands. Uh-huh. I'm sure you're fascinated by this. Well... As I'm saying, my children are all American citizens, you know. So, like, uh, and I'm, I, but I don't get the right to live in the U the U.S. as a result of that, and that's one of the reasons that I'm uh, in the U.K. at the moment. So I'm, I am at least partially interested in it, but it, it's, I, I think it's a long time before it will move on to actually affect. Uh... Well, you're not thinking about being an illegal immigrant, are you? No, no, but the, it's the kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I, I'm busy not voting either way in terms of being in or out of Europe at the moment. I mean, I, I think people should have. Personally, I don't understand why certain people have the right to live somewhere and other people don't. I mean, I can see why people introduce that, but I think fundamentally, the idea of having a right to live somewhere and not to live somewhere else doesn't make any sense to me personally. Right. Well. I think everybody should have the right to live everywhere. But nobody's going to agree to that. Well, you know, just because people don't agree with me doesn't, doesn't mean it's not right. In the big R sense. Indeed. Anyway, but look, there's a, as I, I've got, we've got a pull request in 
there for that thing. And we've also got the ability now to create goals within our um, uh, analytics data. Right. So that's something else to play with. I, I think I want to get a cup of tea. Um, and then, well, we could either play with the analytics for a bit or look for something else to do. Okay. Uh, I oh, guess a lot of, I'm just looking at the, the SCOTUS blog it's called. There's a lot of like four to four decisions. A lot of decisions that were just, they couldn't decide. Court, court decisions. A lot of Supreme Court, like this is the end of the term or whatever. No, okay. So a lot of the most controversial decisions come out in late June. Uh, okay. The biggest mm. controversial decisions are pushed to the end of the term. Mm. Interesting. Interesting. Good stuff. Uh, why is that failed there? What's going on with that? Oh, because it doesn't have the. Uh, oh, we need to merge. We need to get. Pull. I need to get. Don't I merge? Get merge. 10. What was the one we just did? I thought you were in England because you just enjoy. Like things being gray and dull all the time. Yeah, that's right. I love the gray. 1073. No, I mean, uh, I mean, I think even, even if I did have the right to live in the US, uh, I still might be in the UK. Because I think fundamentally, uh, what I realized um, after living abroad in different countries for about 13 years was that um, being apart from my extended family, uh, it, you know, in the UK was well, and, and, and more, you know, having an extended family that's spread over the UK and Japan, and then being in a third country from that is um, increasingly challenging as time goes by. Okay. I guess I'm going to get tea. I guess I'll leave a... I guess we don't have a pressing, well, they need to make a new Hangout because we've kind of got these things working and, you know, it'll be more interesting once it's deployed. So I guess I'll leave this running and I'll see you back in a, in a minute. All right. Cheers.
Okay. Hmm. Okay. Right. Pull requests are green. We label them both with please check. Okay. And so now, uh, but that. Even putting please check on there, it does not seem to have moved them across over here. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Um. Hello. Yeah. Say to um. Oh, it would be cool in some ways if the if the Slack was updated for the with the live status or something. Hmm. Anyway, um, Texas is also suing over bathroom choice. Oh right, I think did you mention that to me the other day? A couple of weeks ago, I think. Right. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I, I don't know. I think they should just should they didn't they just secede or something? I think there's something. Like Texas enjoys suing Obama, I think. Yeah. Well, who wouldn't, really? Um, uh... Okay. Oh. Yeah, I guess there's, there's, there's not... Well, that was some that's some good work today. The oh, I mean, you're kind of interested in the I mean, the, the analytics and the analysis of the site data. You, you're interested in that to some extent, right? Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if I'm setting up these goals correctly. Um. The so basically that's we did the mailing about the um so if we look in and you have access to this as well as well right probably so I keep on looking at like the behavior flow. I was it maintaining the same date? Is that the date range that I want? I want it to go. I want to. I would like it to include today. Well, that seems like a sort of a precipitous change to go from two thousand page views the day before yesterday to five hundred. I guess that's because the day hasn't ended. Anyway. Um, I mean, I guess that the odd odd persons continue. So, what I would sort of like to see is, I would like to be able to specify. Oh, they've got this behavior flow. I would like to be able to specify a page. Like so this is kind of you know, we can see that like a lot of people coming directly to Agile Ventures. You know, uh, staying in Agile. Oh, is, it, is that the starting place? Starting pages, they're going to events. What I would like to be able to do here is specify that a page and say, okay, at like the premium page, where are people coming from when they arrive there and where are they going to afterwards? Is that what it's showing you? Well, no, what this is, show, this is showing me like 
the pages that users land on. Ah, I guess at least here it is showing me. Um, okay, here we go. View only this segment. Highlight traffic through here. Okay. So that says in the last two days, 63 people landed on the premium page. Um, but it's a landing page, landing page, behavior, event label, event action, acquisition. You see, rather than the landing page, I would just like it to be like the first interaction. Hmm. Event action. Not set. But there's an extent to which, you know, some people are looking at the premium page. They're going on and looking at a few other things. It doesn't look like they're particularly moving to sign in. Um, some of them are going on to look at the premium plus, others are going on to looking at pricing. I'm not seeing much in the way of the charges. But so what I was doing the other day, content drill down, I can search here for charges. And I can see to like seven. Okay, so there's a, a little bit more. You know, seven people have made it as far as that page, which is good to know people are still coming in. I, I guess, but so that I'm not. And that's basically sitting in an iframe that starts a thing in a new window. So I mean, I, I guess in principle, we could be um, looking at the number of people hitting events new. Oops. We've got events slash, there, there we go. So like in those two days, we've got 55 people hitting the events new thing, 44 of them. I mean, that's- From the MOOC, yeah. yeah. Pairing on one I don't do we even have that? I'm surprised. That's weird. I, th I guess we have like a page from before that's like a static page. Oh. Oh. Which doesn't exist. Why? Well, that's interesting. So that, that many people are coming in there. But so what I would like to know is from this one, Okay, where is that? What's the? So if I click on this, how can I now find out? Oh, ah, okay, so events pairing on CS169. Right, there was 41 people who looked at this person's pairing page. Oh. Huh. Uh, I think the fact that we've got so many people describing themselves in the event, like it just, it's just crying out to have you like in this space, the image of the person and the link through to their pro profile, isn't it? Maybe. Anyway, I've got a, we've got a ticket in for that. Um, okay. Right, so th these are all things that it's events slash, right. Okay, and then, right, and this is the, this is, these are the, the slug, that when the events have the same names, they get other things added on them. But so there's large numbers of people's people looking on those things. I, I guess the statistic that I would like to see is I, I would I would like to see I'll write this down somewhere. Um, it, it would be, if we would have like a day by day thing of airing sessions started and then like a maybe even a, a bin by numbers of people in the sessions so we might imagine something like we would have monday and then you'd have something like so this we've got three three sessions with that had one person in it 
we had uh, this many sessions with that that many people in it, like this. Uh -huh. So this would be like uh, number of people, number of sessions. And so then, why are we trying to do this through the analytics rather than a database? Well, I think ultimately, uh, what I'm discovering, thinking about is, is yeah, we, we we can't, we can't. I, I was just wondering, off the, you know, since we since we have analytics, could we be getting this sort of data? And the answer, I think, is no. Uh, I'm just imagining this data that I think would be useful. I think that the the thing that would be useful about this kind of data mm -hmm. is, you know, if we if we were seeing that there were huge numbers of sessions that were being started with only one person in them, uh -huh. then that would indicate that we are, you know, failing to get people into into pairs. Whereas if actually the the you know the profile, the number of people with only a single person in them was very low, then that's something that we would, you know, not need to worry about. And you know, if, if 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 we had a similarly, if there was a different profile, well, I think we can actually figure that out pretty easily, can't we? Maybe maybe so, yeah. Uh, like if it was like this, then it would be like, okay, we need some mechanism to help people split out into you know those different different things. But yeah, so so if we're like if we want to do a query on the main system. Like so, I'm, I've got the. Is that still working? Probably not. No. Um, let's kill that. So, Hiroku run Rails console. Then, yeah, uh, where? So presumably we can get the all of the event instances that occurred within a like twenty four hour time period. Okay, so here. We've got the the event instances. <clears throat> they have a product ID association. But project sixty four, it's CS one six nine. But we can get all the all of those projects. Event instance. Yeah, for event instances. And then participants, so it's this structure. Now, I guess the thing is that over time, go on. I was just going to say that, you know, if the update is working and then putting that each time, like it, it's not. Necess the participants is not a necessarily a reflection of, of how many people yeah. were actually in it over the time period. However, we've got that. There's that setup in. Um, I think I don't need that. So just cancel that. Um, uh, the events, like the past events thing here. I mean, we've got this. It's interesting. I mean, th this is almost a view, in some ways, of of that thing, isn't it? Uh huh. Um. Right, and I wonder how that's displaying the participants. So this is the Hangouts controller. Uh, 
and the hangout well and the, and the hangout control that is the event instances controller right it's this index here so that's then the views event instances index so we have 697 uh, event instances in total in the database no associated with uh, that particular project. It's nine. Right, out of uh, 3,000 total. Is it, is it count, to get that stat, you have to do count by? Is that what you were just doing? No. Well, I did, uh, no, I did aware first. Okay. Maybe count by will work too. Doesn't seem to be a, if there's an active record count by. So, uh, so if I want to do first uh, participants, share your screen. Uh, yeah, you can just do count project ID sixty four. Do you see my screen? Uh, I, it's coming in. I think. Well, it looks like the. Um, oops. Looks like you were in one. I probably I've I've maybe popped into one on time six hundred ninety seven right. I'm surprised that this count active record count that it didn't. <laughs> Appalachians count could you not? Average count. Yeah, it looks like you should be able to. Assets. I guess you'd be quite well, This one here Go on. Go on. has multiple people that were in it. Yeah. Uh, a person ID. So, how do we? I just want to figure out how to count those. And I guess the way to count this is just the length, right? Well, we also, like, it's being counted in. Oh, hold on. Go on. Like I think we've got the participants method. Participants dot length will give us right count. So, so you could do a, a map over that. <clears throat> right. Yes. Uh. But actually, I kind of want to. Read. I want to reduce actually. Well, to, to work out, I mean, there's an average. No, I guess we can't use the average because it's doing on the, the, the database. You want to use a reduce in order to like sum it all up and then work out the average number of people? Uh huh. So. We do a reduce. Reduce zero. I just did a. I, just, I, I don't know what you're doing, but yeah. You want to see what I'm doing? Yeah, I see that, but so this this tells us that at least according to the, the majority of the um the, those things are reporting only a single person. Uh huh. Yeah. But so we've got. It may, it may be the case that, uh, sorry, I'll, I'll leave you to concentrate on the reduce if you want to.
I got 903 over. Mm hmm. 697 pairing sessions. Mm hmm. So. One point two nine, mm -hmm. an average, and mm -hmm. uh, as you're saying, uh, hmm? I think that will give us so if I dot participants dot length is greater than one, then return one of the number of sessions that had more than one person in. So 173 had more than one set person in it. Mm. Yes. And so the uh, I think... so our data showing only twenty five percent are right. So, but I don't know how that's wouldn't that act dropped in and out, and yes, yeah, so we've got several things there. I mean, do you know that at least twenty five percent of our sessions had two people on it? Yes, at some point, yes. I mean, we've got the issue that it seems like you know the the, the I mean the bug that we've just fixed may have a have a have an impact on that. Like I'm looking at this one session, and and yeah, there's only a single the updated out is two minutes later. I mean, that might reflect that it was closed down after a few minutes. Um, I was just thinking about this view and wanting to put it into bins of, you know, like per day um, is sort of like how I'd like to to see it. I wonder if there's a, is there a simple way to do that? Like um, kind of Ruby, um, Ruby binning per like day. Is that really easily? You're talking about uh, what is it called? Uh, go on, just never mind me. No, uh, yeah, I was just th thinking about doing um, sort of like so. I've got I've got this um, view over the all of them. Like a histogram, basically. Right? Yeah, and what's it called? Sorry. I guess I'm like, I wonder if I can just sort of specify created at, and then can I like <laughs> specify a particular day there? I mean, If we pulled this down into a, into a CSV or something, mm -hmm. it would be fairly easy to analyze it in R. Because mm -hmm. R has all like a lot of tools just for sure. very quickly visualizing data mm -hmm. and doing basic analytics on it. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether you have experience with R, though. Yeah, I used R in the past and a lot of other similar and related tools. Yeah. Um, I don't know whether you would want to do that, though. Well, I think we, I think we might. I, th I think that the, um, I think that the, I mean, look, looking at this, it makes me want to investigate uh, various things about, you know, the whole, the way in which participants, are, participants are being tracked. Uh, by sorry, the, the way in which um, participants are being being tracked. Like, we actually like to know in an ideal world when people drop off. And yeah, that would be that would be uh, also very interesting. I'm just looking at here about the way in which to extract. Um, particular dates, but it's not, uh, they're not looking. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, what were you 
we're doing right now is data exploration. Indeed it is. And it big companies like Facebook and stuff. Yes. Like even if you're hired on as a supposedly like almost anyone at like Facebook mm-hmm. is supposed to know enough about their SQL system, for instance, or their right. whatever their database is to be able to go in to like production mm-hmm. or a reporting database or whatever and look at data. Mm-hmm. Like to know enough about absolutely how to, how to query data, right? Not on their own. Mm-hmm. My friend says that at, at a IBM they're trying to build some system so that people don't have to know SQL to do in order to do that. They don't have to know anything about the data. Mm. Mm. Interesting. But he kind of figures it's going to fail. Uh huh. And co- it's going to cost. Wow. Yeah. Go on. Yeah, I'm just looking at, uh, you know, I mean, I think data exploration is is one of the most interesting things. It's uh, that's partly why I wanted to get this, you know, show the full set more than the average in order to see the distribution. Um, the um, I guess I should probably. So the, we can basically we can create so I can kind of create a t- time so I can do it on so I probably can't do it through that to record but I could do it through the um, uh, Ruby mapping so I could kind of if we have this I mean, I guess I shouldn't bend too much because what what I kind of want to do is just I don't really care what the days are. I would just like it to um, bin them into Ruby uh, place elements. What do you want to say? I mean, exactly like in advance over time. No, what what I'm particularly interested to see are Ruby places of elements in bins by. Uh, time period. I mean, what, what I what I would like to see is a view, and I can dr- draw this here. Is what I would like to see is I'd like to see like for for the whatever the first day was, like I would like to see like this, like on day one, there was this. This was the distribution of uh, participants in uh, uh, you know the, these things, and um, then. You know, on day two, two was like that, and then uh, so like this. And there's no no rush. For, I mean, I think what we're going to be doing is we're going to be introduce. You know, the fixes that we roll out now will one hopefully. You know, so here's go on. Uh, you can't see my screen, can you? No. So we have data uh, the first event instance with that project ID is March 22nd, 2016. Mm-hmm. And the next one is uh, June 23rd mm-hmm. today. The last one is. OK. Yeah, so we could set up a date range and then iterate through the days, and then we, you know, we run the we run the query, assuming that we can search for an individual things occurring within a certain time period, which I think we can actually. Well, if we search updated at uh, instance, uh, but so you go on. I'm just thinking if we can do date pars. What were you saying was the first date there? March twenty second, and the last one's today. 
So what if we do uh, let's say go on. seeing here that we end up with days and then we could do event instance where I think this might return just nothing whatsoever project ID 64 um, created at um, D and then we we'll just do the count yeah, so that gives absolutely because I think that this. So what we what we need to ask here is not. Well, here's here's data. Okay, there. There's a series of nested arrays with. Okay. For participants and. Right, but uh, rather than giving me the. The data. Do you want to give me the um, the query? Oh, okay. Right. But so that's giving. Um, yeah, that happens to be giving the dates for that. I'm thinking that the easier way to get to what I'm thinking of is if I... I think if we do uh, a way to format it so we just see the date. Uh, maybe. I guess the... I don't know if this is... It, Active record get uh, for a particular day. Use active record defined by month and day. You can use the month and values. Right. I just want to see the date, actually. Hmm. And turn this into sequels of project IT is equal to 64. And comma. And then we have D dot month, comma. D dot day. No, no, some problem there. Ah, there we go. That is stress time. Quote. D. It'll give you these dates in that form. Mm. See what I did? I did. I do. Yeah. It kind of clears up the noise about the times. Yeah, I mean, one one way to go is to pull that into a uh, into a spreadsheet and um, um, yeah, then we can analyze that with like other tools if we want to. Yeah, I was just seeing here if I could pull out the data for a particular day, but it looks like I. Uh, that's it's a mice SQL specific thing here that I've ended up getting my hands on. Uh, which date time method to use for? Oh, wait a sec. Dates where and that's where we've got date in the database.
Wait a minute. I'm only seeing data from like this month. Mm -hmm. Last month. That's weird. Well, that product only existed only existed for a while. Well, I thought I saw something. Yeah, you're right. It's only existed for a little while, I guess. Yeah. Uh. So. Course quit. Uh. Cast. Oh, I guess. Oh, I think I found a. Right. Um. To go back to here, it looks like I can create a date to check, and then I can specify here beginning of day, and then I can go in a range to d dot end of day. Uh, uh, okay. Yeah. No. This is this is what I was looking for. Uh, so you see this here. Yeah. So th this query gives me, like, this is the number of uh, kind of pairing sessions taking place on those days. So we can sort of see the pattern where eventually the MOOC starts and the number of pairing sessions ramps up. Yeah. And then, so in principle, I mean, I'll just take a copy of that. Can you send that to me? I certainly can. Um, and then in principle, we can then do a nested map here. I've forgotten now. So what is the, so if we've then got, this is a, is an event instance. So it was um, participants length, right? Just Jason or something. Still not very nice. I basically just want each can get nested arrays on new lines. Is Ruby nested arrays on new lines? Is this preprint or can I just do pp list? No, that's not what I want. Ridiculous thing. Ruby. Put new, put nested arrays on new lines. Uh, I am about to write a CSV, I guess. How do I do this? CSV. You're going to export to CSV. Oh, I guess, can I, can I take this here and just do map? I'll take each of them. Well, anyway, I mean, it's almost faster with this. If I take this set and I can just break them on the lines. Let me get my query back that generates it. There we go. So this generates let's make that one page. It just seems to me insane that there isn't um so what this is giving me here, control Z, is that's basically saying, yeah, over time, oh, that's interesting, because the previous view seemed to indicate, I was getting, what was I, I sent you the previous one. Yeah, we get a lot, lot, lot of zeros. Okay. So there's, we can see all of these days where people don't, do anything and then we can see all of a sudden there's this day where there's like a single one with four and with two and 
I guess basically what I want to do here is I want to replace cover control F. If I take that uh, I want to take those. Let's re get pull this into here. And to here. Go to CSV. Mm -hmm. So this is at every data point on pairing that we have. Mm -hmm. With the date. The date and then the, the number of people in the session. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you want me to send you those? Sure, yeah, that would be great. Uh, and then what I want to replace that with is I want that on a new line. So Okay. Uh, that's not what I want. Needs to replace like that. Okay. Yeah. So I, I've got the slightly many spaces in it. Just control Z, remove one of the spaces. Really? There you go. Thanks. Okay. Yeah. So I've got kind of the view that I wanted here, which is I can kind of see if we kind of make this smaller. There we go. So that there I can kind of see here. So this is over time. And then this is the distributions by days with the number of people in them. Um, I guess it's time for the scrum. I guess I'll stop the broadcast and kick off the scrum. Okay.